Today, they are, it, it's 98% black. The only white families who are still around are really elderly people who are unable to move out. They just can't afford to move out. Was this a natural transition? I thought it was. Um, until, well, when, when I first learned that it changed within three years from white to black, I said to myself, something's wrong. You know, neighborhoods, 100% of the people don't move out of houses unless some forces are working there to drive them out. So I did some investigation of real estate books and tax assessment books down at City Hall. And what I really learned is that because of one, two, three speculators, um, this neighborhood changed within that three-year period. These men, in other words, changed it. They went in and broke that neighborhood. They scared the whites into leaving, and they directed the blacks to this three-block area. Just how did they do it, did you find out? Yeah. Uh, this three-block area. Just how uh, did they do it, did you find out? Yeah. Um, this is a pattern that happens all over, okay? The first thing they do is they, they plant a couple of black families on a block, all right? They send in their agents then, their real estate agents, to shake up the white community. Before, as the black community moves out of the ghetto area, um, the white community begins to get nervous. Especially, they, they wait until the black community is about two blocks away, and then they begin to panic. Um, now, what's characteristic of this neighborhood is the fear, and that's why the exploiter or the speculator can come in and take advantage of this fear. They do it by, by uh, sending their agents up and down the streets and saying, the niggas are coming, you know what's going to happen to the neighborhood. Um, sell out now, and I'll get you a good price for your home. If you wait six months, I won't be able to get you half of what I can get you now for your home. If you wait six months, I won't be able to get you half of what I can get you now. So it's the whites, busting. Right. Now, the, the neighborhood, the white neighborhood, isn't organized. Um, people live together geographically, but it's not a community. It's not a real neighborhood, you know, what we think a neighborhood should be. And that's why, um, because it's not organized, there's no way to fight this to fight the fear or the exploitation. So the families, the individual families are on their own and they sit over the dining room table and say, we better get out of here. Most of the white families in the neighborhood made their decisions just that way, but they were helped. Tomorrow, a closer look at how both the white and black families are hurt in a frank interview with a white woman who continues to live in a predominantly Negro block and in the same interview, comments from her black neighbor. This is Christopher Gore. City Housing Commissioner Robert Embry has hailed attempts by Baltimore. It started with the house next door. And I guess because the colored people were coming up through this way, mm -hmm. the people began to get scared, so naturally she sold next door. Well, you know, when one sells, boy, the others are right behind, just to go. Yeah. Was Did there any attempt to, to make these people scare the white families who were living here? Well, I had an experience. You want to hear it? Yes. Well, I happened to be sitting on the steps with a friend of mine, and the man that had gotten the house from the woman next door, he came up and he said to me, uh, would you like to sell? And I said, no, I couldn't afford to sell because I can't afford to go anywhere else. And he said, uh, you won't sell? I said, no. He says, well, pardon me, Angie, these are not my words. He said, what are you going to do when these niggers move in here? And they get out on a porch in the summer and they drink beer. I said, hell, I'm going to join him. <laughs> <laughs> and I do. Right? Yeah. You're